Um, so I actually lectured on this uh, as part of chapter 14 uh, when we are introducing the um, when we are introducing in inductance. I actually did a discussion of transformer, and um, I guess what I want to uh, what I want to um, uh, distill that whole discussion down to is this formula, uh, which is when this uh, relates um, transformer voltage or the voltage in transformer with the number of windings. So, you know, if you imagine a transformer with some number of windings here and one of oh, and you know, these windings eventually going somewhere and there's uh, V1 and there's some number of windings here and, and that number of windings is and two, and there's some voltage V2 here. Then um, I think I'm remembering this expression correctly. Um, let me see. Um, th there's only a couple different ways you can combine these. And I think the way I want to, um, the, what I want to say is V1 divided by V2 is equal to N1 over N2. And intuitively speaking, if uh, um, the end with a higher number of windings should have higher voltage, because given the same change in the magnetic field, there's gonna be greater induced uh, voltage here. So yeah, if N1 is greater, then V1 should be greater. So this should be the correct formula. So, um, so, so this is really my starting place here, which gives me the ratio of the voltages that relate to the ratio of the windings. And um, it's uh, telling me, okay, step up transformer connected to this line. Uh, what are they labeling primary and secondary? Let me call this a primary. So this is gonna be my number one. Um, and the, the secondary is where I have the output of five kilovolts. So um, the ratio of the voltages. So V2 over V1 should be equal to N2 over N1. So let me take the ratio of the voltages. V2, 5,000 divided by V1, 110. 45.5 uh, or you know, 45, well, yeah, 45.5. Should it be it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and uh, it says the cube dissipates a certain amount of power. And here's a, something that's a useful for you to always remember when you are dealing with the physics. This uh, idea comes out when you are dealing with uh, simple machines, when you're dealing with the circuits, and when you're dealing with uh, a transformer, which is that energy is conserved, meaning power in is equal to power out, or you know, if you have stored the power, then you can't for that. So uh, with the idea of a voltage and current, we have this, that um, the average power is equal to, oh, I can use RMS, so if we, RMS, which are, this is actually RMS, you don't have to convert or anything, times RMS, I RMS, that this quantity um, is held constant. So as you uh, either, uh, as you step up the voltage or as you step down the voltage, the amount of power in has to equal power out. So this particular combination is not gonna change. Um, so that gives you an expression uh, that relates the current of these circuits. Uh, so I can say V1 times I1 is equal to V2 times I2, meaning, um, so day one, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I guess I don't need to go through this. Um, I have a power and I have voltage for both of them. So I can simply say I RMS is equal to the average power that they give me divided by V RMS, which um, if you didn't know that this was RMS, oh wait, I, they tell you it's RMS. So, all right. Um, so it's simply, uh, 
85 divided by 110 for the primary, uh, the current in the primary winding, 0 0.773. And 85 divided by uh, voltage of 5,000 or um, 0, um, 0 0.017 ampere. So, uh, and this is actually, it, it, the detailed analysis for this, I think it's quite satisfying to go through. So I would uh, highly recommend trying it on your own. And uh, you can actually get, uh, so, you know, this result that the current follows this pattern, you can get it this way. You can also get it from uh, Faraday's law because uh, with the higher number of windings, you can, yeah. So uh, I think in the lecture introduction, I kind of tried to go through it, but it always takes me a bit of a winding path. So I recommend that you do it on your own, uh, but I can have no way of enforcing this recommendation. Um, finally, 110, uh, for uh, 110 breeze sources is effective resistance of, um, well, resistance is kind of defined as um, V over I. So I think I'm just going to do V, 110, divided by this 0 0.773. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the question is getting at, or what you know, larger thing that the question is getting at. Um, under forty-two, and uh, that, and you know, when you actually actually work with AC circuit, uh, there's uh, potentially an additional thing to consider. So right now here, I kind of assumed that this has a linear response. It almost certainly does not, as in. Um, when I apply half the voltage, I won't get half the current. This is definitely gonna be some non-linear response thing. In the context, um, people talk about resistance, either uh, large signal resistance, which is what I did here, or small signal resistance. And small signal resistance is, um, I don't know what the correct notation is. Small signal resistance is defined as, um, you know, dV over dI. Uh, if you change the current by a very small amount, how much would the voltage change? And mm -hmm. when you have a nonlinear circuit element, these two are not uh, necessarily equal. They are equal for uh, register-like ohmic elements, linear circuit elements, and they are not for something like a gas discharge. Um, 